Hey guys, welcome back. So today I'm going to be talking about 10 reasons why we shouldn't be buying an Hermes Birkin. Now, don't get me wrong, I still absolutely love my Birkin and I do have another Birkin on my wish list, in fact. But there are major shortcomings to this bag and these factors are not to be disregarded. So I thought given how much this bag costs, this discussion should be had. Now I've had this bag for about three years, so I think that gives me a pretty good perspective. Anyway, if you're new to my channel, I am so glad you're here. I am Isabel and I do videos on luxury and fashion in moderation. So if that sounds like what you're interested in as well, then I think you'll find my videos enjoyable. So I'd love for you to hit the subscribe button and without further ado, let's get started with the first point. Now, the first thing about this bag is the sizes. So the Birkin bag, I believe, comes in four different sizes. So I believe it comes in the mini, which is tiny, which is the size 20. And then more commonly, it comes in the 25, which is a bit smaller than this one. And my particular one is in the size 30, which means it is 30 centimeters across on the base of the bag. And then it also comes in two larger sizes, 35 and 40, which are rather large bags. The most popular sizes are probably the size 25 and 30. And there's always this constant debate going on whether someone should get the size 25 or a size 30. So that is my point number one, is the sizing. I feel like none of the Birkin sizes are really that perfect for most people. So the size 35 and 40, I think they are more travel bags. They're massive. And I think they're just too heavy for us to carry on a daily basis. So let's focus in on the sizes 25 and 30, which are the more commonly seen everyday bag sizes. So let's talk about the size 30 first. Obviously, if we're buying a bag of this price, we want the cost per wear. So the size 30, I feel like it's still a bit of an in-between size where it's it's not a large tote that fits everything, but then it's not that small. So it's still quite a large bag to be carried as a more formal dressy or evening bag. So it's really neither in my opinion. I personally don't carry a bag of this size very often. I either go for the larger tote that I can fit my laptop and books and everything in, or if I don't need all of those things, then I usually carry a smaller size bag. So the size 30 is a little bit of an in-between for me. And it's quite bulky for a bag that is not a big tote that fits everything. So if you have a look at the side, it's quite wide. So when you wear the bag, it does tend to stick out a little. So if you're someone who's quite petite, then this bag might feel like a bit of an overwhelming size. So then let's talk about the one size down, which is a size 25, which is probably the most popular size currently. That size is perfect for a smaller everyday bag. So that will be my ideal size. And it's not so bulky. It'll be much lighter than this bag to carry around. But the handles are a major shortcoming of that bag. The handle size proportionally to the size of the bag looks beautiful. So it is an aesthetically pleasing proportion. But unless you're someone very, very petite, usually the handle drop is a little too short. So I tried it on in store. I can get my hands in but the handles can only go halfway through the arm. So the only way to really carry that bag is as a top handle or as like a little tiny wrist bag, but you can't actually put it comfortably on the crook of your arm. That does make me hesitate on whether I should really go for the size 25 or not. But personally, I am okay to have a bag as a top handle bag, and I'm completely okay to have a bag on my wrist like that, and that can give me enough movement and freedom. But if you're someone with larger hands, or if you are someone who needs your hands free all the time, then not being able to wear the bag even at the crook of your arm could be a major con, which leads me into the second point, which is the versatility. This bag is not very versatile. There are literally just top handles. It doesn't come with a shoulder strap or anything. So you can't actually wear this bag any other way than by the top handles. And the Birkin being a more casual bag, I believe most people will use it for a casual day bag, which means you could be out shopping, running errands. And the fact that you can't be hands-free on the go can be quite a bit of a con. So if you look at bags of this size, other than the Birkin, a lot of them actually come with a shoulder strap. And I think this size is still a size that can be worn as a shoulder bag or a crossbody bag. So again, on the aesthetic front, it's really nice and simple and clean. It doesn't have the clasps. It doesn't have the shoulder strap hanging or anything, but functionality wise, I feel like this is not the best bag 
Next point is another functionality issue and it is that it is a completely open tote and it's very, very hard to close. So realistically, you won't really close the bag unless you really absolutely need to. So you can close the bag, but the flaps are really fiddly. You have to line all the parts up perfectly. And it doesn't help that my bag is in a more stiff leather, which is the Jonathan leather. And it's really quite time consuming. I might have to insert a b-roll for this because I really can't do this like this. So I'm going to set it down on a table and close it and show you how fiddly it is. Anyway, as you can see, it's really fiddly to close it and open it back up. So most times you're just going to use it like this. So if you need a bag that closes easily for security reasons, then this is really not the bag for you. Next up, the Birkin doesn't have that many organizational features for a larger tote bag. It's basically one open space with a small sleep pocket at the front. And it does actually have a zipper pocket at the back, which is just over here. But as you can see, because of that flap there, it's really not the easiest to access. So I personally don't keep anything in that back pocket. So if you want your bag to have more pockets or be a little more organized, then you really need to put a bag insert that has the pockets and the organizational features. So it's just a very simple bag with not many features. So things can quickly become a bit of a mess in there. Next up, even though it doesn't have a huge Hermes logo anywhere, all the branding that it has is this tiny little Hermes stamping at the front of the bag, which is quite subtle. Even then, it is a very recognizable bag. I think most people would recognize this bag as an Hermes bag that is quite pricey. So it's not the most understated bag. It's not loud, but it's still very recognizable. So if you want your everyday bag to be more subtle and a little more understated under the radar, then this girl is not for you. And of course, we can't leave out the price point. The Birkin is a very, very pricey bag. I was lucky enough to get this from Paris. So the price was a little bit more reasonable. So this one, I think I paid 7,000 euros thereabouts. But even then, that is a lot of money to pay for a bag. But I have to say, a lot of other designer bags have really gone up in prices. And considering the quality and the craftsmanship of the Birkin, I feel like the price is becoming a little bit more reasonable lately relative to many other designer bags such as the Chanel Classic Flap which is basically the same price as the Birkin. But that leads us to the next point which is the availability and being able to purchase one. Now the Birkin is quite famous for being really hard to get from the boutique directly officially because of the small quantity that they are produced in but a lot of people suspect that it is just a whole marketing thing you know Hermes probably has a lot of these bags in the back room but they just want to only sell this to a certain number of people. I don't know what the real truth is, but the fact is that you can't just walk into a store and buy one of these. The only way to instantly buy one of these is probably from the resale market, but then you're paying double or triple the price of the bag, which is already extortionate. So the only two ways of purchasing this bag directly from the boutique would be one, you go into your local Hermes boutique, find a sales associate that you really get along with, and then build a profile, which means buying different Hermes products across different categories, then hoping that they will remember you when one of these bags become available. The only other way to get one of these bags directly from the boutique without doing that whole building purchase history thing is to fly over to Paris and try the Paris Mothership store because that's probably the only store that you have a chance of getting this bag without building an extensive purchase history, which is exactly what happened to me when I purchased this bag. So it's not exactly the easiest and a lot of people aren't a fan of that whole Hermes game as we call it, which is their marketing strategy. But that is the fact and you kind of need to decide whether you're up for that or not. Point number eight, you can also end up with a lot of associated costs with the Birkin. Given the cost of these bags and how difficult it could be to purchase one of these bags from the boutique, you might want to take out insurance, which will cost you every year. And you might also want to accessorize the bag or get different items that you need for the bag, such as the bag organizer or the insert or the silk twillies like I have here that you might want to wrap around the handles to protect the handles from wearing down 
down quickly. You might want to add bag charms. I mean, there could be a lot of associated costs which will make this bag even more expensive to have as if it wasn't expensive enough in the first place. Then here comes the color variations. Hermes is well known to do beautiful colors and the Birkin bag comes in an array of beautiful, stunning colors and different hardwares. You can get the silver palladium hardware such as mine, you can get the gold hardware, you can get the rose gold hardware, but here's the thing. Like we talked about before, it is really hard to purchase one from the boutique and it is also very difficult to specify exactly which combination you want unless you're a super VIP who buys a lot from Hermes then your sales associate might get you the bag in the exact combination the color, the hardware, the size you want but for the majority of us they might get you a bag that is close enough to your wish list but it is very hard to demand a bag that is exactly what you want which I know sounds really ridiculous but that's how it goes and the Hermes attitude would be a bit like like leave it or take it. So that is probably a major turn off for a lot of people because you're paying all this money but you can't even get exactly what you want. And again, there is the option of going the reseller route and pick exactly the bag you want. But again, you're gonna have to pay for that luxury of being able to pick exactly what you want because these Birkin bags in the resale market are going to be double or triple the price of the boutique price. And lastly, it is the style. A lot of people call this bag quite a boring bag and I tend to agree. It's probably not the most stylish or exciting or fun bag design, but I don't mind that because I personally think that that's one of the things that makes for a very classic and timeless bag that you don't get sick of. I don't like bags with a lot of bells and whistles. Maybe I'm not the most adventurous when it comes to fashion and accessories, but I quite like that about the Birkin. But I completely agree that the style is really boring and if you want a more exciting bag, this is definitely not going to do that for you. So let me know what you think about the Hermes Birkin bag would you consider one or would these cons be turning you off from buying one of these I'd love to hear from you so you leave your opinions in the comments below anyway I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel as always thank you so much for watching and spending some of your precious time with me today and I can't wait to see you again soon in my next video bye guys